On Thursday morning, Six Flags made their official announcement for two new coasters coming in 2025. These had been teased or leaked, so we weren't too shocked. But yesterday, we got official names, stats, and we got to see the layouts. One is going to Great America, and one is going to New England. And overall, I think these are good additions that make sense, but that doesn't mean I'm 100% on board. So I will also talk about my concerns and where I think they could have done better. Let's talk about Great America first. This is Wrath of Rock Shot. This is Wrath of Rock Shot. This is Wrath of This is Wrath of Rock Shot. This is Wrath of Rock Shasa. First off, interesting theme. I like that it's not named Flash or anything like that. Rakshasa is a demon in Hindu mythology. It's also kind of hard to say, so I'm just going to call it Wrath, and I bet most people will do the same. Second, it's a dive coaster, and that's an automatic win for any park who gets one. The general public sees that vertical drop in big inversions, and they're drawn to it. The parks also love the capacity on dive coasters, this having 7 across seating in 3 rows, so 3 trains and 21 riders per train. That's not bad, especially considering the last two coasters were not great for capacity. Max Force has two 16-seat trains, and the Joker is the Joker. It's a slow line. It's also B&M, so you know you're getting a solid, reliable product, and shouldn't have extended downtime. Now, let's look at the layout. B&M has been putting 95-degree drops on their dives, and this one goes 1 degree steeper. So it's the new Dive Machine Drop Angle Record Holder. Personally, I think going beyond vertical adds a lot to these dive coasters. That extra kick is great. You ride dives like Valraven or Yukon Striker, and the drop is pretty mild. But Dr. Diabolical and Iron Menace both have that fantastic pop of ejector. Also, this is 180 feet tall and has a 171 foot drop. That's about the same size as Goliath if your home park is Great America and you want a comparison. It sets the dive machine record with 5 inversions, starting off pretty simple with an Immelman, a dive loop, and then 3 rolls. The first one has an upward incline which should be interesting, and the last two are actually interlocking, so I don't know how noticeable that'll be when you're riding it, but it looks good from the outside. Then, it kind of twists around before it hits the brakes. This is a long dive coaster, 3,239 feet, about 400 feet shorter than Yukon Striker, and it really is a cross between the big 200-foot monsters and the 150-foot budget dives. This doesn't have a mid-course brake run. Some people like that. I personally enjoy the drop off the mid-course if it's steep enough, but it does kill the pacing and most people just want to keep moving. So, the next question. Is this the perfect addition for Great America? I will tell you one thing. They were able to fit this in without taking out Demon, and this does come very close to Demon, so they wanted to spare it and they were able to. Between dive coasters being popular, this park needing a high capacity coaster. I mean, last week I said that Canada's Wonderland was going to have a capacity issue with Alpen Fury. That park gets crowded and Great America is in the same boat. That's a huge park that draws a ton of people, and this should do just fine. Great America doesn't have a flawless coaster or a traditional B&M looper. You got Batman sitting under the track, X-Flight on the wing, Superman in the flying position. So, on top of the 96 degree drop, you got those traditional B&M inversions that you won't find anywhere else in the park. My one fear comes from my ride on Iron Menace this year. I don't know what happened with that ride, but it's so shaky, and I'm not even talking about that final jolt before the brakes. It just wasn't pleasant. I did not have the same experience with Dr. Diabolical. I hope this doesn't end up like Iron Menace. Leading up to this year, I was convinced that Great America was in line to get an RMC single rail. Great Adventure got one, Magic Mountain got one, it only made sense for Great America to get one also. But in the end, it may have came down to capacity, and those Raptors seat just over half what those 7 across dives do. So, great choice, interesting layout, good stats, the name is hard to say, but it does lend itself to some interesting theming. They didn't have to sacrifice a coaster to make this happen. Good job Great America, just make sure it doesn't have the Iron Menace Rattle and this will be a home run. Now, Six Flags New England, and they're getting the Intamin Family Straddle Launch Coaster, Quantum Accelerator. First, this is a launch coaster, and that was the park's biggest gap. The last time they had a launch was 1999, when the Aero Shuttle Loop Black Widow was taken out. And even then, those launches aren't real launches. That's not to say these straddle coasters have great launches either, but they count. They use spinning tires, and the ride will reach a top speed of 45 miles an hour. Based on the POV, it looks a bit slow to start, and then when it hits the mid-course booster launch, that's when it kicks it up a notch. These are right in the line of a family coaster and a thrill coaster, so they do have mass appeal. I've ridden a few of these, and I've never been impressed with Wavebreaker at SeaWorld San Antonio, but I did enjoy Hoovalin at Jurst Summerland. That packed in some extra bite. Which one will Quantum Accelerator be more like? We're gonna have to find out. But if you look at the stats, you got 2600 feet of track and a 45 mile an hour top speed. Almost exactly the same as Wavebreaker, while Hoovalin is 8 miles an hour faster and 700 feet longer. So I bet this will be on the mild side. That's not a bad thing. Coasters like this have mass appeal. 
Coaster enthusiasts may not like it, but you have the gimmick of the motorbike seating, you have the launches, the compact spaghetti bowl track. It'll be a popular coaster, and it'll be in a great location, using the plot Goliath used to sit on. All that being said, the Six Flags New England need another family coaster. They already have Great Chase for Kids, Catwoman's Whip is one step up. Then you got Gotham City Gauntlet and Pandemonium as mild throw rides, and this is going to fit somewhere in that mix. Personally, I think New England is very top heavy. They have 11 coasters, but after you get past the great top two of Wicked Cyclone and Superman the Ride, you have Dark Knight as a decent number three, Riddler Revenge as a distant number four, and then you got clones and mild coasters. So I was hoping that New England would get the same treatment as Canada's Wonderland or Carowinds. Both of those parks are stacked with coasters but only had a few good ones. And over the last 15 years, Cedar Fair has been helping to balance that out. I don't think Quantum Accelerator does that, the way an RMC single rail could have, or the way a new Age of Acoma launch coaster could have. I was hoping they would take out Flashback and open up a giant plot right there between Wicked Cyclone and Pandemonium, and they would get a Vacoma Firestorm or a Top Gun model. That would have been the most perfect choice for me. That being said, I get why they chose this, and I don't think it's a bad choice. I just can't give it that A+, as a perfect addition. Its capacity isn't great either. It seats 16 per train, just like Max Force. But for a park that doesn't get as crazy slammed as Great America, I think it'll work out just fine. Now, let's look at the big picture. Six Flags and Cedar Fair just merged, but these additions have been in the works for months. Also, the merger has been in the works since last November, so it's good to keep your eyes open for anything that might be changing. We got a mid-sized B&M and a small-scale Intamin. Five years ago, this would have sounded insane. Six Flags just did not work with these companies anymore, and I'm assuming that was because of cost. It's good they're finding a way to get two of the top five manufacturers back into the mix. These announcements didn't break any kind of glass ceiling. Two years ago, we saw B&M work on Dr. Diabolical, and this year, we saw Intamin start working on Georgia Surfer. Still, it's good to know those weren't just one-off projects, and this increases the chance of something big coming in the future. Maybe a new Giga from either company. Maybe a Pantheon-type coaster. Maybe a major wing coaster at a Legacy Six Flags Park. The door is now open. I think the biggest takeaway is that these are custom layouts. We know how much Six Flags loves their clones, and we got two coasters that were designed to fit on their plots of land. To me, that's the biggest win, these coasters having their own identity, not something you ride once and never again just because the same ride is at every other Six Flags park. These are unique, solid rides, they're going to be popular with their guests, they fill gaps in their parks, and their capacity makes sense for their parks. So Six Flags, you did good. Maybe down the line, Great America does get that B&M Giga, or RMC Raptor, or even RMC T-Rex. And maybe, down the line, New England gets a New Age Vacoma Extreme launch coaster. But as far as 2025 is concerned, both parks just got a lot better. Six Flags still has two other coaster announcements pending that we know of. We'll find out if Magic Mountain is getting something similar to Quantum Accelerator, or if it's something bigger, from another manufacturer, or something different entirely. And then we have Six Flags Mexico. People are pretty confident they're getting a Harley Quinn themed tilt coaster, the one that Energylandia ordered but canceled. Tack these two coasters on top of the Flash at Great Adventure and Georgia Surfer, and you got six major unique coasters opening at the Legacy Six Flags parks in 2025. That is, assuming the new for 2025 coasters actually open in 2025. They were only one for three this year. That'll get you into the Baseball Hall of Fame, but in the amusement industry, it's kind of embarrassing. That's all I have for now. Let me know what you think of these two coasters, if you love them, hate them, somewhere in between, and if they are a good fit for the parks. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, and if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.